Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, our this month's January Training Tuesday event for OU Campus. Today's topic is Advanced Find and Replace with Regex. You'll be getting an introduction to regular expression and how to use it to make complex global adjustments to pages. During the presentation, all participants will be in a listen-only mode as the session is being recorded. If you have a question during the presentation, you may submit it online by clicking on the Q&A tab located on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, do make sure it's the Q&A tab and not chat so that we have your email address in case your question warrants a follow-up reply. Simply type your question into the dialog box at the bottom of the screen and send. We will attempt to address your questions during the presentation. After the formal presentation has ended, we will review and answer all remaining questions. This is also a sort of a, a rather text-heavy technical presentation, and all the PowerPoint slides will be available for download afterwards. Um, so if you have a question about those, they will be available for reference. All right, today's presenter is Robert Kiffey, Senior Support Specialist at Omni Update. Rob? Hello, everybody. Um, assuming you can hear me, Erica, right? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first uh, Training Tuesday of obviously this month, but also the beginning of the year. Um, we decided to start with a, uh, a fun one. I've been wanting to uh, share this with you guys, and in fact, we got inspired, and um, I'll be sharing this topic at our um, training conference as well uh, in much further detail than what we'll be able to get to today. Um, still, it's a pretty complicated subject, um, and so it, it, it probably is going to be a lot of material, and I'm going to try to go through it as lightly as I can, um, and feel free to send me questions and stuff after, but uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so, uh, welcome to the um, presentation. We've got, if I can figure out my projector here. So we've got our first um, thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at you know what it is we're we're what part of OU campus we're wanting to work with today, which is of course global find and replace, um, and then we will uh, dive into um, why you know we might need to actually make use of uh, regex instead of just doing a normal find and replace with simple text. So I'm going to craft a um, example scenario. Um, and then, due to you know the the needs of of uh, resolving that scenario, uh, we'll dive into some background on some regex, um, and then we'll take that knowledge and we will apply um, that to create a solution. Uh, and so, ideally, that's basically what we'll we'll go through. Of course, the introduction to regex uh, is is kind of a more technical oriented thing, but hopefully. Um, you know, it's it's kind of more of a logical thing. Uh, so hopefully, as I lay it out, it will start to make a little bit more sense to you, and it won't feel quite as foreign. And maybe you'll you know want to pick up and uh, expand your knowledge further on it. So without any further ado, let's move on. So um, as you guys are hopefully aware, um, Global Find and Replace is a feature <laughs> in OU Campus. And um, you basically go into the content tab um, on your top panel and drop down into the find and replace. And um, again, you know, this is something that is only available to uh, high level administrators, level 10. Um, you know, um, and so, uh, you know, if you don't necessarily have access to this, um, you can consult with uh, team members, uh, you know, who might. Um, and eventually down the road, we might be able to open this up, depending on custom user levels and stuff like that, that as those features expand. Uh, but anyways, right now this is going to be just for high-level administrators, but uh, this is a very powerful tool, and um, it has the potential to affect all of your pages and break all of your pages. So that's why it really is so restricted. Um, and But that also means that it's a very powerful tool because it can affect so many things. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, 
what is available to us. The first thing is going to be that it will only search a single site. So yes, you would need to run this for each site that you might have, um, it, you know, assuming that you were trying to fix more than one site at a time. Um, and the other thing is, is that the nice, one of the powerful features of it is that you can really narrow down the scope within that site so that you're only affecting uh, certain uh, parts of your site. And that's really, really handy for uh, narrowing down and making sure that you're not um, changing things that shouldn't be changed. So let's take a look here. Uh, here's an example screenshot on the right, and we've got, of course, um, uh, the options uh, at the top, which is that you can choose literal text or regular expression, and we'll get into the regular expression part later. The literal text, obviously, is just looking for literal text. You can choose to ignore the case if you want, um, uh, but when you get into regex, we will ignore that part. Um, and then, of course, there's a replace right underneath it, so that way you can find your text and replace it with something. Of course, the scope down below is where you can, uh, you know, filter out and choose, uh, you know, what you want to affect uh, in your site. So you notice that you can include assets so that you can search the text in your assets. Um, or also, of course, all of your files, and you can also uh, change what file extensions are even being manipulated. So there's lots of uh, cool features that go along with that. Hopefully those should make, um, you know, uh, a lot of sense for how to do those things. Uh, you can always check in with us later if you're curious about certain combinations or whatnot. Um, but that's not really the point of today. The point is to make full use of that regular expression uh, check our radio selection at the top. So let's get into that. So let's say, so let's, we've, this is our, gonna be our problem here. Let's say that we've got um, a, uh, a series of links throughout your site that are pointing to an external domain and maybe like a blog site, maybe just Google, whatever. Um, and let's say that you want to uh, add, you know, the target equals blank attribute, which is how you would uh, tell a link to open into a new window or a new tab, depending on your browser settings. And so, um, you know, usually, you know, it's up to the user when they create that hyperlink that they, you know, choose the drop down and, and they pick, you know, uh, target new window. Uh, but, you know, not everybody knows to do that. Uh, and so this might be like a fix for you. Uh, that you want to go through and, and, and uh, fix all these links. So, uh, you know, it's, it may not necessarily apply to everybody here, but hopefully you can run with my little um, scenario here and uh, we can, we can uh, work on it. Uh, so here's, for example, a page that might have uh, these two links on them. One is um, a href equals, and then you've got your uh, I do also have a slightly incorrect link there, but that's okay. Uh, but you can see it's a um, global link to Google. Uh, and then you have another one right below it that's root relative. Now, for those of you that are running Dependency Manager, um, that might actually be a, um, a D tag or an F tag, depending on what you're pointing to. Um, and either way, that's kind of should be designating that that's a link within the site and you know, you're probably going to want to um, transition, you know, on your current page to that location. Uh, usually the external links, you know, on this point to other sites, that's when you're now leaving your own site and you want, um, you know, you, you don't want to lose your spot in your site. You want to keep that up. You want to, you know, encourage people to, you know, go to that other uh, resource as another uh, tab or window. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we basically just want to add that target equals uh, underscore blank to the link. Um, and this is why I normally ask for questions, but uh, I'm still getting used to this format where nobody, I can't hear anybody, so <laughs> no worries, uh, we'll move on. Um, so that's what we want to achieve. And um, the main questions here are, how do we find all the external links there, there's, you know, going to be numerous links scattered throughout your site. How do we affect only the ones that are external? Then, secondly, 
um, you know, this is kind of an extra addition, is how do we add an extra attribute? You know, what happens if there's already um, other attributes in the link? Let, let's say there's a title attribute, um, and what about if there's already a target attribute, stuff like that. So there's lots of, um, you know, variations that could basically, you know, disrupt what your, your find and replace search is, especially, you know, with a simple text, there's just no way for you to know all the possible different locations that you might be linking to, you know, to find. So, um, so this, is, this is definitely a case where, you know, regex would be required and it's gonna be very useful. So let's talk a little bit about what regex is. Now, I've been um, <laughs> referring to regex and regular expressions interchangeably, and that's because they are. Regex is just a shorthand version of the term regular expressions. And so um, this is a little bit wordy here, sorry guys. Um, uh, but basically what a regex is, is it's a pattern that describes a certain amount of text. So it's a pattern matching uh, format uh, for finding specific text patterns, if that makes sense. Um, and this concept arose uh, in the 1950s when a mathematician, Stephen Cole, um, you know, formalized his description of a regular language, which is basically he was kind of inventing a, a programming language at the time and kind of dreamed up all of this pattern matching uh, process. And of course, I stole this from Wikipedia. Uh, feel free to go research more um, uh, <laughs> on the background. It's, it's, it's cool stuff, but uh, don't have time for that today. So moving on. Um, keep in mind, regex in its main format is is used in almost every single pro programming language. Um, you know, C sharp, uh, PHP. Um, uh, I'm blanking right now. Um, basically, everything Java. Uh, you know, anything you could think of. Perl, especially uh, Python, etc. Um, and the thing that you have to keep in mind is that because so many different languages utilize this this very similar um, you know, regex system. Uh, there are there are some variations, though. There are a couple different engines, so to speak, that you know run the processing for regex and do the searches, and that can sometimes change the syntax a little bit. It's very minor. Um, I'm not going to go into too much of the syntax changes because uh, throughout all of uh, OE Campus stuff, uh, we use Java syntax, which is pretty standard. Um, and, um, you know, if you have any questions on that, you're, you're welcome to reach out to us later uh, if you're curious. But uh, um, things like Notepad++, Notepad++ if you're using the finer place in there, uh, that text editor, that uses a, a, a slightly different version. Um, but most of it, almost 99% of it is going to be pretty much the same syntax. There's just a couple differences, and uh, there's, there's places you can go to, to find that out. Okay, so moving on. Um, <clears throat> we have basically what a regex pattern is going to be made of. And so uh, the first thing that, um, you know, is, um, you know, available to you to do pattern matching is your literal matches. So it's basically a simple text match. Um, and um, almost all the characters um, are going to be um, a literal match. So for example, in my sweet little diagram I have down below, I've got my name with a capital R, keep in mind, in the orange little arrow box. And that is going to be my regex pattern. And in this case, it is a literal match. There's no nothing special about it. It's just that word with a capital. And in my sentence, you can see um, that might be on my page. I have, um, you know, my name with the capital R, and then I've got at the end, my name with the lowercase r. And in this case, uh, because the literal matches of regex, uh, it is case sensitive. And so um, I would get a hit for my, the first instance of my name, but not for the second instance of my name. Uh, so for most cases, you can actually build out your regex patterns with most of your literal characters, and you would build out as you see fit. Um, however, that's not obviously the power of regex. The power comes with um, these things called special characters. And uh, this is a little bit dense right here. I'm going to go through them in a little bit more individually, but this is just kind of the full list here. 
but as you can see, there are a series of special characters that then uh, change things and make things uh, more interesting. So the first one that we're going to take a look at is the wild card. And that is your period, your uh, period character. And so as you can see in my regex pattern on the left, uh, I've got a period instead of an R for my name. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to match any character that comes right before the literal text of O-B-E-R-T. So as you can see in my uh, um, uh, text content, it's going to match my name at the beginning with a capital R. It'll also match uh, my name with a lowercase r because it's a wildcard. It's going to match uh, basically any um, text character that you could have. Uh, it does not match white space, though, uh, and so spaces uh, get treated a little bit differently. But in this case, it's going to match both my capital R and lowercase r. And uh, if you're not careful, um, it can also match uh, Gubert, which um, uh, not the G part of it, but just the O that comes right before it. So this is kind of just a small point, is just to keep in mind that um, you know, you're not necessarily guaranteed to match an entire word with your pattern here. It's searching through the whole thing just to look to see if it can find any piece that matches that pattern that you have. So in this case, it's matched just a portion of that word, Gubert. Okay, so um, yeah, hopefully some of these are, are just silly enough to make this a little bit less uh, uh, obtuse here, but that's not the right word. <laughs> Anyways. Regex basics continued on. Uh, so the next portion of the special characters are what are called quantifiers. And quantifiers are um, uh, basically um, a way to define how many of a particular character, character or character set that you expect to see. And the main culprits here are uh, question mark, asterisk, and plus. Uh, and so the first one, uh, question mark is representative of zero or one uh, instances of that particular character that you, um, you know, are applying this to. Um, zero or more is asterisk. So basically it could be there and it can be there to the extreme. More likely you're, you're going to be using um, one or more. Uh, well, that depends on the situation. But one or more means that that character has to be there, but there can be many of it, and that would be the plus. Um, the curly brackets uh, is a little bit more advanced, so it's kind of getting ahead of, of ourselves. Um, don't find, I mean, it, it's plenty useful, uh, but being that we're trying to keep this to a little bit more of a simplistic, we're going to skip it for now. But the idea is that you can use that curly brackets with a number inside it to uh, define exactly how many numbers uh, of the cases of that character that you expect to see. The example I have in there is a capital A, remember it's case sensitive, um, with a three next to it, meaning that it would always match a triple A. Okay, so um, the other thing to keep in mind is that the quantifier only matches the previous character. So with, when we look at my sample regex here, I've got Roberta with the question mark after the A. And in this case, that question mark only modifies the A character. So what that means is that in my uh, pattern, or excuse me, in my text, uh, that pattern will match both my name, Robert, and at the very end, uh, my aunt's name, <laughs> Roberta. Um, and that's because the question mark says that that A can exist zero, in which case the first, or one, which is the case at the end. Yeah, okay, so moving on, question mark. Um, so, well, let me go back real quick. So in a similar way, the, the plus sign or the asterisk, the asterisk would work here as well, but it would also catch in case there were multiple A's at the end, like Roberta or something like that. Um, so that's why in this case the question mark was the better uh, fit because we'd only expect to have one A at the end. Um, but you could use different quantifiers depending on what you're, you know, specifically looking for. And we'll we'll come back to quantifiers. They'll kind of uh, creep into what we're doing over and over. Uh, so um, I'll try to remember to uh, emphasize those. Okay, so 
The next uh, set characteristic of uh, regex here is creating character sets. Um, and these are ways that you can define, um, you know, uh, a, you're basically matching a particular character or depending on a quantifier, multiple characters. But the idea is that a set replaces a single character without any modifier. Um, and it allows you to match um, as, as many different types of characters as you want. Um, and so rather than having a literal text of, of um, A, you know, or not A, or something like that, you could, um, you could have uh, a whole list of different characters that you that could possibly get matched in a particular spot. Um, and so what you do is you encase these characters inside square brackets. Um, and so that could look like this. So for example, uh, if we wanted to match uh, different cases for the first uh, uh, word here, or excuse me, the first letter of the first word here, um, you know, we could have a, a um, uh, character set that includes a lowercase a and an uppercase a, and that alone would match either a lowercase a or an uppercase a, as mentioned. Um, the quantifier, as you can see, there's a plus sign right after it. it it's sneaky because it looks like it's part of the literal text afterwards, but it's it's modifying that character set. So that means that I can have more than one a, and it could be either a capital A or a lowercase a. Uh, so in this case, in my example, this particular regex would match, of course, the proper um, start of a sentence, aardvarks, with the capital A. Note that it does not match the S at the end, so I left that black. Um, and then, of course, you get the full lowercase uh, in the middle, and then at the very end, you've got a misspelled version of it. And notice that the quantifier there is actually going to match all three A's because the plus sign is just one or more. So as long as there are, you know, one or more in there, it will match all of them. So, um, you know, so that's why you have to be a little bit careful with some of your, your quantifiers. But in most cases, um, you, know, um, you know, maybe you want to match that anyways, or uh, the rest of your little text is unique enough that you're not too worried about, um, you know, accidentally matching something else that could possibly be there. I mean, what other things would be in front of aardvark? <laughs> um, but just something to keep in mind. Okay, so moving on. We start getting into advanced stuff with regex. And this one is, is really important. I throw this out there right away, even though it took me forever to learn this one on my own. Uh, and I wish that I had known this right away. So. Um, and, and you'll see why this will come into play, especially where we work with HTML uh, and XML. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. But um, the, the idea is that if you have a character set um, and you put in the caret symbol right in front of the uh, list of characters, as you can see in my example here, uh, that actually negates that particular character set, meaning that all the characters that live in that character set are now negated. So what does that mean? That means that it will match any character that is not that character, um, which is, uh, you know, it could be a lot of different things that will match, um, you know, depending on what you have in that in that character set, that could, that could match almost everything, um, you know, except for that one character. So, and in this case, uh, I have only a capital A in there, and so that means that uh, that little character set will match any character that is not a capital A, um, including spaces, including um, uh, basically everything. And actually, um, <laughs> I screwed up on my um, my uh, text here, my match, uh, because that will also match um, space characters. That would effectively match the whole string there that I have. Um, <laughs> let's see. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse. Oops, my mouse here. But uh, uh, I'll have to fix that. Maybe I'll update my regex for you guys when I uh, set up the uh, PowerPoint again for you. Um, but the idea, if we just look at it individually here, at least at the start of the string, uh, you can see that um, the not uh, capital A, uh, it will match the lowercase a uh, that comes right before aardvark. 
Uh, and so it would only match this portion of the text here. However, if we go over to the next one, uh, you can see that there is no capital A. Um, and so my mistake here was that it would uh, correctly find the first portion of the word aardvark here. However, because this could also match uh, <laughs> uh, space characters or anything other than a capital A, it would also actually match all the way up to this capital A. So it would be this whole string from aardvarks like to play with other aardvark, and it would go all the way to there because that plus sign means one or more, and it would match all of those characters all the way up to that basically not a capital A. So uh, dangerous, uh, but can be useful, and we'll see more in, um, <laughs> in uh, as we go with our solutions. But uh, uh, they can be very useful, um, so, but you just have to be careful with them. Okay, so um, uh, more dense stuff here. So one more thing, uh, actually there's a couple more things, but uh, one more big item is um, a shorthand method for referencing certain character sets. So instead of uh, creating a character set where you've got, uh, you know, all the lowercase letters or something like that, and then all the uppercase letters, that could be really, um, you know, time consuming to type out all the characters that would be, you know, uh, a group basically that are kind of commonly grouped together. Uh, and so they've given you a series of um, uh, shorthand references that refer to these character groups. Um, and so the most common ones, there's a bunch of them. You, you can go look them up um, on Wikipedia or any other regex uh, tutorial site. Um, but the most common ones that you'll see that you'll probably want to be uh, using will be the slash uh, D. And that will stand for all digit characters, so zero through nine. So if you're trying to match, uh, you know, numbers or something like that, then the slash D is just an easy way. You don't have to worry about, you know, figuring out what numbers you are trying to match. Um, the slash W is going to match all word characters, um, and uh, that will basically allow you to catch, um, you know, all the, the text letters that you might want to have, or alphabetic letters, uh, and, uh, you know, I think it also does match some special characters like hyphen and stuff like that. Um, you have to test it a little bit if you're curious. Um, and then the slash S is a big one for us. Uh, and the reason I say us is because when we're working with HTML, um, you know, there's a there's actually a when you look at um, the actual characters that are created when you create a tab character or you create a return um, or even just a regular space, those are all like in a in a, a basic text uh, system. Those are actually all recorded as separate text characters, um, but uh, you know. So a space, you know, um, character, if you had that in a regex, um, would, you know, not necessarily match the tab or it might not match the carriage return. Uh, and so if we're trying to just find any and all white space, because when we're looking at HTML or XML, a lot of times that white space is more just for friendly text reading, basically. It's not necessarily because it's important. Um, and so if, if you're just trying to, you know, match those space characters, this slash s is, becomes very, very important because it matches all space characters. Um, and so that can be pretty powerful. Uh, we won't go into that one too much uh, today, but uh, I definitely think it's an important thing to, you know, uh, think about um, when you're when you're trying to do regexes because I think it will help you do your matches um, in the long run. Um, and um, if you're curious, I can I can give you some sample stuff later on if, if you want to go into that further. Okay, so the last thing on this is that the cool thing about these is that there are opposites. Uh, and so if you use the uppercase or the capital letter version of these, so a slash with a capital D or a slash with a capital W, uh, or in the example that I have down at the bottom, a, a slash with a capital S, it is the inverse. It actually matches all non-space characters, uh, or in the case of the digits, all non-characters that are, I mean, excuse me, all characters that are not digits. Um, so it's basically, it will match everything but that group. Um, so again, it's like the, neg the that negative match um, 
uh, format. So that can be pretty powerful, um, you know, for excluding certain types of things. Um, so that's uh, another thing to keep in mind. Again, this is kind of advanced. Uh, we'll, I don't know if we make use, I don't think we actually make use of this um, in our particular example here. Oh, we do make use of the slash s, we do. Okay. Uh, so here's an example of the slash w in play. Notice that I don't have a quantifier after the w, and so in this case, um, that means that that slash w is only going to match one character, but it will match any um, word character. So in this case, uh, it will match correctly, unlike my plus quantifier previously, it will match correctly the regex. Uh, of the text patterns that I have here. As you can see, it will match the capital A that comes before the lowercase a uh, in my regex pattern. Uh, and uh, it will also match the lowercase, and it will also match the lowercase here. And this is the, the you know, remember it's only gonna match a portion of that, whatever this uh, make, you know matches directly in here. Okay, so. Um, I'll let that sit for a second, and then we're going to move on. So the last part that we're going to cover in our regex tutorial here is capture groups, and this is especially important for find and replace because we want to replace the text that we're matching with new stuff. Um, but most of the time, we actually want to keep some of the stuff that's in there, um, and, and that's the big power of regex with a simple text string you basically have to replace exactly you know what you had in there with with something else but you can't keep anything um unless you know well you already knew because you had to type it out as a simple text uh but in this case since we're with regex we're matching um you know um a who knows what variety of different matches we want to we might want to keep what's there intact um and so the idea is that we would group that kind of text portion or that string of characters in a capture group using parentheses. So I have a somewhat complicated example here, but uh, as you can see, this the, the capture group is around the word the, and the first letter of the um, has a character set, so that's the square brackets, of course. That allows either an uppercase the at the beginning of a sentence or somebody's title or something like that, or it'll also match the lowercase t uh, for just a filler word, uh, et cetera. Um, and so that that basically allows you, one, to group by itself. It just groups it. You know, it doesn't really do anything uh, except that you would then be able to um, capture it on your replace statement, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but it also allows you, because you're now grouping stuff, it also allows you to add a quantifier to the end of it. So in the case um, that I have right below, you could potentially uh, match uh, with that case of the word the, and then I do have a space added in there, um, just because you, know, you might have a band name without an extra space there. Um, and in case you forget whether it's, you know, the um, killers or just killers or whatever, think of any band name. Is it the or is it without the the? Who knows? Um, you know, this would basically allow you to catch both instances. Um, so uh, that's kind of neat. Um, and so that whole the becomes optional because that whole character um, uh, sequence is now uh, – you know, captured as a group, and then you can add a quantifier to it. Um, so that's that's the first portion of capture groups, of course. Um, the, the what happens when you go to actually replace them? How do you refer to those capture groups that you've created? So um, what you need to do is you need to use, and this is where the syntax can vary slightly from um, engine to engine, but in our case, Java, we use the dollar sign. So in your replace statement, you put in the text that you want to have go into the replace, and then you refer to your capture groups uh, using the dollar sign, and then the number in which that group is in order. And the way that you figure out the order, because sometimes you could have nested um, capture groups, um, is that you have to count from the opening parenthesis um, mark. Um, 
and that allows you to correctly count the order in which they are. So even if, let's say, that that um, it, you had one that was inside another, uh, even though that, that inside one would end first, uh, it doesn't matter. You're only counting the first opening ones. And so it makes it really easy to figure out which one's which. You just count the opening ones. So here's an easy example right here where we have, uh, actually, I think I forgot to get rid of that one because I put it here. I did. I'll clean that up. Okay, so I have a friendlier picture example. So we've got a find, uh, and we've got on the left, we've got the uh, example domain here where we have the uh, www with a period, and that could be optional because sometimes schools use, or sites in general, use um, you know just the domain, and some use the www. Um, and so uh, let's say that we want to actually strip out that that WW when we want to, you know, maybe we're trying to use just the domain and somebody else has typed in the WWW, um, we can optionally search for it. Um, and then, you know, uh, we could capture it if we wanted to, but in this case, we're actually trying to get rid of it, so we won't use it again. Um, we'll just keep the domain portion of it. So as you can see in our find, we have a literal text batch all the way up to, um, you know, our little group here, which is the www. Notice that I had to escape um, the period. So I forgot to mention this, those special characters, if you need to match them as the literal text item that they are, then you just escape them. So you just escape them by adding a backslash right in front of it. Um, now note that if I had left this as just a period, um, it probably would be okay uh, because, um, you know, it's, it's unlikely that you'd have, um, you know, something else in there. Um, but, you know, sometimes you do have like www-dev or something like that, and then that would match technically the dash. Um, but ultimately, the rest of the, the pattern probably wouldn't match, and so you wouldn't, you wouldn't really get any false positives, most likely. Um, but it's always better to try and be as accurate as you can, um, and then that way you just reduce the amount of uh, chances that you might have a false match. Um, and so, uh, going back here, we've got two capture groups. We've got the first one, which is the WW for the subdomain, and then we've got the second one, which is just domain. Um, now, <laughs> I just realized that I have a literal text in here, and I have the period, um, so I will need to fix this again. <laughs> I was trying to do a generic domain.edu, and then I have an actual example over here. So I'll have to make those consistent. Um, so imagine that they were, you know, a consistent literal text match between the two. Um, my apologies. But um, for example, uh, we would we would match the domain, um, and that is our technical sec uh, technically that's our second capture group. So that becomes number two. And so what happens is in our replace statement down here, we have the literal text that we want to, you know, keep um, or just replace it with. Um, you know, in this case, I probably could have had a second capture group or a, a third capture group around this and then done dollar sign one. Um, but in this case, I didn't, I just, it was easy enough to type it back in, so I left it. Um, and so we just wanted to keep that capture group two portion of it. And so what happens is, uh, the domain portion of it gets captured in the second capture group, and that gets brought in, but um, notice that there was no www. I had a question mark on here, which meant that it would be optional. So technically it would still match this, and then it would just write out that. And it, that works fine, that's fine. Um, here, of course, that www exists, and so what would happen is that would get matched in the first capture group, uh, and then when you go to replace it, that is lost because we did not do the dollar sign one in our replace. Uh, we just did the dollar sign two, which was just the domain, and that goes in. Okay, <laughs> so um, I, I totally took a shortcut on the domain portion there. We will actually resolve that issue in our uh, actual uh, solution that we will look into next. Okay, so heavy part through, let's start uh, taking a look at what we're going to fix. So I'm going to escape out of my PowerPoint here for the moment, um, and then I have OU Campus uh, in um, Chrome. 
uh, doesn't shouldn't matter too much on your browser. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to just show you real quick is here's a sample page that I have. Uh, and so we have um, in here, I just created some links. This is just a real basic uh, page that I use for training stuff sometimes. So we just take a look at the HTML that's in here. Um, you can see that we've got a couple links. Um, we've got a normal one with, a, with an F tag, of course. Uh, and then we've got a couple that are external. Notice that one of them does have the target blank on it already. Um, so that could be a potential problem when we uh, get into our solutions. So let's take a look at our first steps. Let's slowly build a regex that will fix these. So the first thing that we can do is we want to match the A um, because that is what a link is. It's an anchor tag. Um, and if you go into, uh, of course, you need to switch over to regular expression. Um, so now we're saying, okay, we're going to start matching um, using our, our nice cool pattern stuff. Uh, and so we'll start with some literal text matches. These are literal text uh, carrot or open um, uh, Chevron, I can't even think of it right now. Uh, letter, less than, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so less than A, and then um, we could have a space, you know, uh, it's not guaranteed that there's going to be, um, you know, only one space, uh, but we can start with just that, um, and we can add in the fancier stuff later. So let's put in the basics of what we're trying to match. So we've got our, our link, a with an href in there, uh, and then of course we open that attribute and there's going to be stuff. Um, so this is where now we can um, make use of those um, uh, uh, shorthand references and quantifiers to help us out. So let's say that since I don't know how many spaces there could be, you know, uh, there should be at least one. So what we'll do is we'll do the uh, backslash S and we'll do the um, plus sign so that there's at least one space that goes there. Otherwise we're matching some other node that doesn't make sense. Um, and we can come over to the end because just in case that there is a space in there at the end. Uh, in this case we'll use the asterisk because there could be a space or there may not be any spaces. Uh, so in this case there's two different quantifiers used uh, to track how many spaces there are. And, um, and that should at least take care of uh, the link, um, at, at least the ones that don't have extra attributes. Now, um, let's do the next portion, which is figuring out what, um, you know, links, uh, you know, what could possibly be basically in this attribute for the href. Uh, and that's, that's where things get a little bit tricky because um, there could be lots of different symbols and characters and things like that that could be, you know, built into a link. Um, so, you know, in, in my opinion, this is, this is one of our prime opportunities to figure out um, maybe what's not supposed to be there. Um, and so this is, a, this is a big case where uh, the not, the, the negation stuff came and it, it, was, it was revolutionary for, um, revolutionary for me, whatever, <laughs> uh, when I figured this out because regex was so much harder before then. Um, so here's, here's my tip. If we know that what we're working in has to be structured a certain way, then we can make certain safe assumptions about our text matches. So for example, for this to be a valid link, we know that um, the portion of the link, this attribute itself, we know that we can't have another double quote inside that attribute because it would prematurely end the attribute. Um, and so we know that that is actually a character uh, that should not be in there. And so this, if we do a not, and then we do a, a double quote like this inside our, our um, square brackets, we have created a character set that matches any character that is not the quotation or the double quote. Now, of course, this would only match one character, so we need to add a quantifier to it. And in which case, um, we could either match one or more. Um, it doesn't necessarily match 
um, empty hrefs, but that's not really our concern at, at this point. This would match basically anything that has at least something in there. Um, and so if we want to just give this a spin, um, we can go down and do just the find. Note that I just have this uh, scope narrowed down to my training folder for the moment. Um, but you can do a find and you can just see what you get. Uh, and as you can see, I am correctly matching uh, any links. Whoops, close to, no, come back to me. Um, as you can see, I'm matching basically any links that don't have any extra attributes in them. But I am matching uh, those two perfectly fine. Uh, notice that I'm also matching some Excel stuff. I'll probably need to ignore that file later if I go to do a find replace. Uh, but as you can see, it's going to match basically anything that goes into that um, href uh, field. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, the next portion is to try and account for um, uh, any links that might have um, attributes in them. So if we go back over to uh, our search criteria, we can get back to our regex pattern. And maybe instead of doing the uh, space character, um, what we can do is we can make another assumption about how the structure of our HTML is. And we can say that there is not going to be a closing uh, greater than symbol um, uh, because uh, that has to, you know, again, that would prematurely end our linked uh, tag. And so we're going to match any character that is not that closing one, and we can do that uh, plus number of times. So technically this here would match the href um, portion as well, but because I've also explicitly defined the href right after it, it will stop as soon as it finds this first instance. Um, technically, uh, this is where you, you start getting into some more advanced regex. There's greedy and non-greedy. In this case, it, it, it could potentially be greedy, where um, it would match um, if there was an href in there as well. Um, if, it, let's say, href was defined twice, uh, it could match you know, uh, up through the first one and, and then stop at the second one. Um, then maybe you might need to you know, prevent it from being greedy, which would be adding an extra uh, question mark. Uh, don't really want to get into that too much today, uh, so we're going to not worry about it. Just know that there should only be one href in here, so it's just not going to match the link at all if, if, um, um, you know, if there was more than one. Um, okay, so, um, so we have, this will match basically any attributes that come in front of the href, and we're going to need to do the same thing for the end. So we'll come in here, we'll do this, and then that's optional uh, as to whether those things exist. And this, by defining this um, symbol, which is this not here, as long as you have that at the end of your, uh, as a literal match at the end, um, this won't, shouldn't stop prematurely because it will go all the way up to this point. It's a little bit complex, but uh, hopefully that should make sense. And if you see, we do this find, uh, we should get another hit. So we got a couple more hits, and as you can see, at least on my test starter page, uh, you can see that I'm now also getting the link that has the, oops, the target blank on it. So that way, you're also going to match links that maybe have a title attribute or, you know, a class or something like that, um, which is pretty important. Okay, so the next phase is going to be making sure that we hit our external links. Um, and that's kind of the big trick um, because that was the whole point is that we wanted to make sure that we're hitting external stuff. So what we can do is we can then um, say, well, if it's going to be external, then there's going to be an HTTP protocol at the beginning of the link. Uh, so it has to be HTTP. Uh, now, there's a lot more sites that are moving to HTTPS, um, you know, and so that is, should definitely be in our radar, but not always guaranteed yet. So what we could do is we can use the quantifier question mark to say, well, it might be there or it might not be there. Uh, so that uh, basically. Rob, 
Oh, yep. Uh, we have, a, we have a request if you can zoom in on the screen a little. Sure. Sorry, guys. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I forgot to uh, pull up the QA portion, so I had the chat oh. window all ready to go, and then I yeah. Anyways. Uh, no worries. No worries. <laughs> let, let me know if there's any other questions that are I'm missing. Uh, you're okay. Good. Okay. Hopefully that's better. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, so. Uh, so here again, little text match for the opening anchor tag. We've got a uh, negated um, character set match that will match basically any characters that are not the closing um, uh, greater than sign, which closes out the opening tag of your anchor tag. Um, and then we have a literal match set up to here for um, actually technically even up to here. Uh, but a literal text match up to HTTP, um, and then this question mark defines the S as being optional. Uh, and then from there, we continue with our neg negative match for anything inside that attribute that's not a uh, double quote. Uh, and then we finally get a literal match for the end of our quote, uh, or end of our attribute. Uh, and then we have a another not match that goes all the way out to the end of our um, uh, at your, uh, excuse me our uh, opening tag. Note that this I don't care about the text of the link itself. Like there could be a uh, link to Google or something like that. You know, and normally this would be the rest of your HTML. Uh, in this case, I'm not worried about that because I'm I'm only adding um, the attribute to this particular opening tag portion of the anchor tag. Um, so uh, that should at least get us to match everything that we need to match. Um, and so for here now, if we do a find, you can see that we're going to match basically all of our external links. Um, and so just those two. So that's, that's perfect. That's what we wanted. So the next step, oops, sorry, wrong screen. The next step is to go back and set up our capture groups. So what we need to do is we want to capture as much as we can. So we want to, so we don't have to rewrite it as much. Um, this is kind of optional to you. You could either have just a series of dollar sign one, two, three, uh, or you could kind of rewrite as much as you want. Um, so I can maybe start with both. Let's re retype for now. Um, so let's say that we want to keep um, this portion right here. So whatever that might be, that could be dollar sign one. Then we have our href, and that's going to go all the way to here. So what I might do is throw another capture group around that, all the way up to here. And that way we keep our, our href. Um, attribute intact. So that's going to be dollar sign two. And then the very end of our um, uh, link, we're going to have that whatever, you know, attributes that may come after. And so that will be dollar sign three. And then your closing mark. Now note that I could just move these. Uh, whoops. Oh, I lost it all. <laughs> uh, I'll have to retype it. Hang on a second. So we have the brackets. You can think of, see how I how I think of it here. Uh, we want uh, multiple of those. Close that. Then we're going to have our thing there, and we'll just copy this. That's going to be the asterisk, though. Uh, and so now we've got to add our capture groups in again. My bad. This is the other alternative, is that we just capture that whole portion um, up to here. And then we capture from here over to here, and then open a new capture group and capture all the way to the end. So then we don't need to retype anything. We just do dollar sign one, dollar sign two, and dollar sign three. And this is the cool thing about um, OE Campus's um, 
uh, advanced uh, find and replace now is that there's this preview replace. So this is where we start getting into, okay, now that we got replace statements, this is going to be really nice to uh, see what we're actually going to be replacing first. So let's go ahead. Oh, I forgot to add in the, um, the uh, external portion. So the HTTP S with the question mark. Okay. And so if we do our uh, preview, you can see what we're going to be getting rid of in the red. And then you can see what we're going to be adding in the green. So this is really cool um, uh, for you to test. Uh, and you can see, um, you know, what you're going to be getting rid of and what you're going to be replacing with. Um, it's, it's pretty powerful. You can then pick and choose the individual files that you actually want to actually change. Um, you don't necessarily, even if you had a larger scope and you were matching a lot more stuff, you could still narrow it down in this window and, and pick just the ones that you want. Uh, and maybe that's useful as a, um, you know, a test run, you know, just to make sure. Um, you know, so there's, there's lots of, of cool features that, you know, we have with our advanced find replace here. Um, I'm going to go back, though, one more step, because the whole point was that we wanted to add in our target. Uh, so what we need to do is, is somewhere in our <laughs> um, series of dollar signs uh, capture groups, we need to add in our, um, our new um, uh, attribute. So we could either add it in before the href or we could add it in after the href. Uh, I'll go with the after. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll add a space. We'll do target uh, equals. Uh, and then we'll do um, underscore blank. This is all just, you know, literal text because that's what we're adding in manually. And um, I added the space because um, uh, we, we technically, um, this second capture group here, it, it ends right after the, the quotation mark. So there isn't really a space. This, you know, if you think about what this is, this is, this is your href. So I needed to add a space here to make sure that it was treated as two separate attributes. This one here is probably not as, re as required because it's either going to be the end of the, um, the link tag, uh, and in that case, so we don't care about the space, or that there might be other attributes, but whatever it was, all that stuff that was after the href was captured in there. So if there was a space, then that space will be added again. Um, Honestly, if you're worried about it, adding an extra space is fine because, again, uh, white space characters are not as um, uh, a big deal as long as you have at least one. <laughs> so, you know, we could do this the safe way if you want. Uh, it's a little bit easier to read, too. Uh, and so we'll do that, and then we'll hit the preview, find, replace. Okay. And here we go. We can see that we've got the first one, which, oops, adds the target equals blank. And then the second one is adding a second target equals blank. Now, here's where things get tricky. Regex is great for finding stuff that's there. It's not so good for finding things that aren't there, um, or at least looking for, uh, for elements that don't have things, so to speak. So it would be really difficult to set up a regex that tries to check to see if there is a target with the blanks uh, attribute already in it. Um, because you, when you do a, the negation, it's really hard to negate a whole um, uh, character set. Actually, there is advanced regex where you can do like uh, look behinds and, and crazy stuff. That is way more complicated than I want to get into today. Uh, so for most of you, if, if, if you're still kind of learning regex, most often what might make the most sense is to actually run two separate find replaces. Uh, so, I'm going to run this find replace right now, and I'm going to fix that. I'll just say adding target blank. Okay. And if we refresh our page here, Yeah, it doesn't like that link, so obviously it's going to throw me a little error. Uh, so what I need to do now is I need to come back into my search criteria. 
I'm going to uh, check my training folder, which is what I had before. I'm going to come into the regular expression again, and this time I'm going to look for uh, a link tag that has um, the uh, any characters basically up to uh, target equals, and I don't really care what happens after that. So we just continue with our matching um, stuff. And then uh, if there happens to be another target, uh, actually I do care. <laughs> Hang on a second, let's, uh, let's add that in for now. And then we have matching up to uh, our second target here. Uh, and then that will be, um, I don't care so much about. Um, and then up to you on whether you wanna end this portion of it. Uh, this is only going to check for two instances, um, so what we can do is we can just get rid of that. So it'll match basically up to the end of that first or that second target. Um, and then this is where um, we need to match whatever could possibly be in that target. Now we know that um, you know maybe if there are two blanks, um, you could match them literally, and maybe that's fine. Um, but it's possible that maybe one of the other targets, I mean, that's a little bit of a um, um, going down a rabbit hole too, because, you know, which one do you keep, et cetera. Um, in this case, we're going to get rid of the first one. Um, and so what we'll do is um, uh, we're going to look basically for whatever that could possibly be in here. And we are going to capture that target up to here. And then we are going to capture everything else around it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to go through this a little bit faster since we're running out of time. Um, okay, so here's our first capture group is one. We do not want to keep this one. We're actually gonna get rid of it. So we are only going to add in number two. I mean, number three, we're going to skip two, just like that. And so now if we do our preview find replace, you can see that we um, will end up with a uh, link that has just the single target instead of the two double targets. Note that I have the extra space in there. That's going to be okay. So we'll go ahead, replace that. Note that if uh, somehow you ended up with a link with three uh, targets, you could rerun that same um, search again, and it would then match. Now what was two became one, so your three would be to come two, and you could run it again, and then it would be one. Uh, so you could, if you're worried about it, you could just run that same search pattern over again and see if you get any results. But as you can see, it, everything should be fixed at that point. So now we come back over to our starter page and we take a look uh, at our source code. And you can see that our links, the normal one was unaffected, but we have our Google one has the target blank and we have our last one, uh, Tomni update also with the target blank. Uh, and so there we've done some pretty advanced regex. Um, but hopefully that should kind of give you a decent amount of tools for uh, getting into it. Um, you know, feel free to start light and small with regex and then you can work up to be more advanced. Um, uh, but hopefully this will make it so that you're not quite as scared about what it is and what it's doing and, and things like that. And there's plenty of good resources online um, and you're always welcome to check in with us. Uh, send a ticket in to support if you need help with the regex. We're, I'm always happy to help with those. Uh, and, um, you know, if, if you have questions, feel free to check in with us. Uh, as for questions in general, that leads us to uh, our portion of this Training Tuesday.
which is the Q&A part. So let me see if I can find the, um, <laughs> Erica, how do I get to the Q&A portion of the chat? Okay, so I see one question. Um, can you negate a literal match? Um, so um, in this case, uh, I think what you're asking about is, is a, a, a literal set of characters, um, uh, meaning more than one character, literally. Uh, and in that case, uh, you would not necessarily be able to negate um, a whole set of characters that are in a particular order. Uh, what you would need to do is you would need to say uh, not uh, that character, and then like basically you'd have to set up a square bracket. I'm wondering if there's maybe like a um, better way I could show this here. So here's some of those examples that I have. So let's say that you wanted to say um, HTTP, google.com, and let's say you wanted to match basically any link that did not have Google in it. This is where that negations, uh, basically with the basic regex is, is not really possible. Uh, and, and certain regex engines don't support fancier back referencing and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna get into that. Um, but right now the, the question would be, let's say could I negate this portion of it? So I don't wanna match any links. I wanna match links that are HTTP, but don't have Google. Uh, so that's the hard thing to do uh, because if you were to do this out with simple regex, you'd have to do something like this. To, to get the negation, you'd have to do the not character and it has to be in a character set uh, and it could only be one character at a time, right? So you'd have to do this. Uh, now here's the problem with that though, uh, assuming that I continued on with the word Google. The problem is, is that all I care about is that I'm not matching a G here. Um, so that's not necessarily the best way to do this because what happens if, um, <laughs> in the news, um, you know, what if, what if I did actually have a G for something else? You know, that's, that's gonna give me a false positive because, um, or at least it's, it's not gonna match this one even though I want it to because this one, it still starts with the G and O. Um, whereas um, this here basically is just going to say as long as it doesn't start with a G and then as long as it doesn't start with an O, um, you know, uh, after that, then it, it's still basically a, uh, um, it basically means that it will never match this even though I would want it to, if that makes sense. So there's there's better ways to do that in regex and it's called uh, back references or, or like forward checks and stuff like that. Uh, that's very advanced and um, feel free to send me a ticket or an email and I can I can um, get you some regex to do that. I don't, I, I'm not actually sure if, if OE Campus Engine supports it. I'd have to test it. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that helps explain the difficulties of, of trying to make sure you don't match something, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, yeah, no worries. No, it's a good question because that happens all the time. You're like, I wanna hit all these things except for ones that have this. And then that's, in those cases, it's almost better to almost always try to do two regex searches instead. Um, uh, you basically, you could go in and add in a class, find all the cases that you know you don't want, go in and add like a, um, some kind of identifier that's easy to find, and then you can update your second regex to, you know, not a, um, uh, affect, basically you'd have to add something that would make it a lot easier to check for, <laughs> is, is the point. So anyways, hope that helps. Um, okay, any other questions, Erica, or anybody else? I don't see the Q&A, so I'd have to figure out how to get to that. You could put in chat if you want, if you can. Uh, 
let me see. Let me try uh, closing this real quick. And so I can see the Q&A portion. Okay, and that wasn't, there we go, can you zoom? Okay, so it was just that. Doesn't look like there's any other questions. Um, so before people get uh, going, let me um, go ahead and share one more slides here. So let me go back to here. Yeah. And we've I, got, I, oops. Oh, yeah, Erica, so yeah. Next, month, next month's training Tuesday is going to be February 28th. We're gonna be talking about accessibility um, you know, making your website more accessible. Um, it's going to be led by Rich Paul, who's done a couple uh, training Tuesday or two before. Make sure to visit the OCN or the, or the support site for further details. We'll be sending out an OCN blast. And as I mentioned at the beginning, all the, the recording of this training Tuesday and all the PowerPoint slides will be posted on our support site so that you can view it easily, come back for reference. And if you wanted more of this or wanted to go more in depth about regex, we, Rob is going to be leading a workshop on it at our training conference. So that's coming up. That's going to be the April 2nd through 6th. You can register on our website. Um, that's the next slide. <laughs> that's right. I'm controlling yeah, that. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So OUT17.com, it's going to be in San Diego on a private island. We've got a lot of workshops and presentations lined up, again, including going more in depth about regex. So I highly recommend you check it out. All right, and I believe, unless anybody has some super last minute questions, that is the end of today's training Tuesday. So thank you all very much for attending and have a great rest of your day. And thanks to you guys, take care.